Hello, I'm Dr. Charlie Collins. Let's talk about research methods. Today I'm going to talk about sampling methods. Uh, I will discuss the sampling process, probability and non-probability sampling, steps of probability sampling, probability sampling designs, and steps in non-probability sampling. Before we jump into our discussion, let's again turn to the running example of research on Airbnb. Please revisit my video on the research process for a short explanation. I was really considering changing up the topic, but given the nature of Airbnb, it's a perfect example for sampling. So I'm going to use it again. So what is sampling in the first place? Sampling is the process researchers use to select cases to include in their research. Sampling is hugely important in the social sciences because we're often conducting research with groups of people where it would be impossible to include all cases, or what we would call a population, into our research. Again, if I'm researching discrimination on Airbnb, the population of Airbnb hosts and guests literally encompasses hundreds of thousands of people. If I had all the money, I still would bet that I could not get the entire population of Airbnb hosts to take part in a study. It would just be impossible to do. So instead, what I would do is sample a much smaller number of those individuals to represent, as best as possible, the population of Airbnb hosts and guests. Now there are two major types of sampling, probability and non-probability sampling, both of which are used for different reasons, and I'll talk about that later. Probability sampling is selecting cases from a population of cases such that each case has an equal probability of being selected for the sample. For example, if I'm selecting from a population of, let's say, 100 people, and I'm sampling 10 of those people, each person has an, equally, e an equal chance, uh, a 1 in 10 chance, of being selected for the study. Right? So each individual has an equal opportunity to be in the study. If probability sampling is about equality, non-probability sampling is completely the opposite. Non-probability sampling is the process of selecting cases in a non-random way, so each person in the population may have a greater or lesser chance of being selected for some particular reason. Let's talk about the steps in probability sampling. These are defining the target population, constructing a sampling frame, devising a sampling design, determining sample size, and collecting your sample. The last two on this list, determining sampling size, or sample size and collecting the sample is a bit beyond this talk, so I'll skip those. But just know that they're necessary. First, we need to define our target population. Our target population is the group of people, or cases, to whom we would like to generalize our results. These are the people our sample will represent. For our Airbnb project, we may define our target population as Airbnb hosts who have hosted in the continental U.S. over the past 12 months in the top 100 populous cities in the U.S. Here we've explicitly included certain groups and implicitly excluded others, such as Alaskan and Hawaiian hosts. Our second step is defining our sampling frame. This is not the sample. It is an operational definition of our population from which we may eventually draw our sample. It identifies all possible cases which may be included in the sample. Fortunately, our target population definition already provides clear rules for our sampling frame. We know that we can only sample cases in the continental US, only those who have hosted in the last 12 months, and whose rentals are in the top 100 populous cities in the US. I may also add another criteria such as they are hosting in their own personal homes as opposed to an entire home. Third, we need to devise our sampling strategy. You may be thinking, but Dr. Collins, can't we just randomly sample from every case in this sampling frame? Well, we could, but there are other ways to randomly sample as well, and for different reasons. Fortunately, our Airbnb research can put all of them together, so let's talk about those. So going back to your question, Yes, we can randomly sample from our sampling frame. This would be called simple random sampling. We could list all Airbnb hosts that fit our sampling frame cr criteria and randomly choose a few hundred out of the thousands of hosts for our sample. 
This is one of the sampling designs for probability sampling. Another type would be stratified random sampling. This is a procedure where we would divide the population into strata, or variable categories, and draw random samples within those strata. For example, we may be interested in looking at different types of Airbnb hosts, ones that rent out their entire home versus ones that rent out a room in their own personal homes. This would be our two strata, an entire home versus a room in a private home. We can then randomly select cases within those two strata. But a major question for a project like this would be something like, well, what about geography? How do we sample that? Well, that's what we have, that's what we call cluster sampling. Cluster sampling is when we break down a population into naturally occurring groups or areas, such as cities or neighborhoods, and then we can randomly sample those clusters. Uh, we can also randomly sample cases within those clusters. If we do both, that would be considered multi-stage sampling. The great thing about probability sampling is we can use any combination of these sampling techniques together to draw our sample. In any case, we need to track what we did so that we can report it later. Let's move on to non-probability sampling. This is a sampling design that selects cases in a non-random way, so all cases in a population do not have an equal chance of getting selected. Non-probability sampling is not an ideal sampling design because it can bias our data. But it can also be very useful when studying individuals who may be at risk, hard to find, or we're not interested in generalization. There are three steps in non-probability sampling. Selecting cases or sites, selecting observations, and designing our sampling method. For non-probability sampling, we are typically wanting to understand something in depth. To select our cases or sites, we must understand what that thing is. For discrimination on Airbnb, we may want to talk with hosts who discriminate to find out why. These people would be our cases. We would then figure out what to observe. What is the thing or phenomenon we are recording in some way? Then we move on to our sampling design. There are four types of non-probability sampling design. Convenience, purposive, snowball, and theoretical. Convenient samples are just that, convenient. They're the cases that are round and easy to access. Most political polls, TV surveys, and advertising surveys are convenient samples because they just go to whoever's close. In our Airbnb example, we would simply reach out to those people we know who host or use Airbnb in some way, uh, maybe to complete a survey for us. And then we'll use those responses as our data, right? They're convenient to us, they're easy to find. It may sound like convenient sampling is completely useless, but fortunately it's not. Convenient samples can be useful for things like pilot testing research that we could then scale up to be more reliable um, and to use other sampling techniques, other pro uh, probability sampling techniques. Purpose of sampling is a technique where we would sample specific cases for a particular reason. In social science research, these are usually hard to find or at-risk individuals. For example, we may want to understand the experiences of those who are discriminated against on Airbnb. Because there's no list of people, we want to reach out in a purposive way to select those individuals. Snowball sampling is a technique where we would ask our respondents to recommend others who we could contact and who we could talk with. I use this technique in my personal research with anti-racist organizers. Because most anti-racist organizers are not totally public with their activism, they can often be hard to find. If I've built rapport with a couple of them, who then can send me to others who do similar work, it gives me a bit of credibility through that reference and allows me to talk to similar types of people. This is a good use of snowball sampling when you're wanting to talk to similar types of people who may have close connections with each other. Finally, theoretical sampling is a process where we may select cases to fill in gaps or build our theory. This typically comes after we have conducted interviews or field work to help answer questions that we may have. Again, in my research, I found that the process of activism for white identified anti-racist organizers is different from organizers of color, which has left me several questions and things that I'm interested in. 
As such, I've intentionally selected white identified organizers to fill in some of those gaps and fill in some of those questions that I have. Generally, but not always, probability sampling is used on quantitative research, and non-probability sampling is used on qualitative research. Again, this is not always the case. Probability samples allow us to generalize our data to larger populations, whereas non-probability sampling allows us to understand certain groups or phenomena in a, deep, in, a, in a deeper way. Well, that's what we have for this discussion on sampling. By now, you should be familiar with the sampling process, probability and non-probability sampling, steps of probability sampling, probability sampling designs, and steps in non-probability sampling. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Charlie Collins, and I'll see you next time.